Ever since From Software released Demon Souls and subsequently Dark Souls, the titles have basically spawned an entire genre of games listed as being Souls-likes. A Souls-like tends to be a game that either replicates the From Software formula or takes inspiration from it. There are also souls Lights, which are less heavily into the Souls combat style or gameplay style, but still take some level of inspiration from Souls games. I've done several videos on amazing Souls-likes that you can play, but of course there are always new Souls-likes to talk about so today's video will be a list on 10 upcoming Souls likes either coming out this year or in the next coming years that you should definitely keep on your wish list. Inotria The Last Song is an upcoming Souls-like that is releasing on September 19 this year. Set in a world inspired by Italy, you play as the maskless one, who must defeat the authors that created your destiny and free the world from stagnation. The world has basically been afflicted by the Canovaccio, an eternal play that keeps the world locked in an unnatural way. Inotria features brightly lit environments set in the summer, three customizable loadouts, and lets you collect over 30 masks to wear from fallen enemies, alongside 68 unlockable skills and tons of different build combinations to give you a chance to personalize your playstyle. The devs have released a playable demo, so if you find what you're seeing interesting, you can go and check that demo out right now before the game releases. Black Myth Wukong is an upcoming Souls-like action RPG video game set in China that draws its inspiration from Chinese mythology, where you play as the Destined One in a story inspired by a Chinese classic called Journey to the West. The game is set to release on August 19, 2024, so the date is coming up pretty fast. Black Myth Wukong has melee combat and a magic system, and from what we've seen from trailers and gameplay reveals, the game looks insanely engaging and interesting. Some of the boss designs are absolutely wild, and the gameplay itself looks like it's a blend between a few different Souls-like style titles. I think Black Myth Wukong is definitely an interesting game to take a look at and keep an eye on. He doesn't even know what he's destined for. Those old rascals, they surely know how to name. Tell me, is my kind destined for extermination? You're driven by glory, not destiny. So this is the face of the destined one. It will fit me just as well. Bathed in blood, yet preaching peace. Oh, you immortals, pray enlighten me. What justifies your superiority? The Relic the First Guardian is still a ways away in 2025, but we already have seen some content from the developers on what this game should play like. The game takes place in a world called Arsiltis, which you must save as the last guardian. Basically, Arsiltis was once a really prosperous place, but was ruined after the Great Relic was destroyed. Your task is to find the pieces of the Relic and close the void. The Relic is a semi-open world action RPG with five weapon options, different playstyles, and unique skills, as well as no leveling up. Instead, you use runes, items, and crafting tools to make your character stronger alongside playing through dungeons and defeating bosses. So far from what we've seen, this game looks pretty good and sports some pretty dark, neat visuals. Hopefully, the final product will deliver an awesome experience. Flintlock The Siege of Dawn is probably the closest to release on this list, slated to come out on July 19, 2024. We recently got another look at the game during the recent Xbox showcase, which I did make a video about if you want to go and check that out. Flintlock is about Nor Vanek, an elite member of the Coalition Army and Flintlock weapons expert who must fight against the gods that have unleashed destruction on the land of Kian. Flintlock The Siege of Dawn uses Souls-like elements combined with rapid mobility in what the devs describe as dynamic and explosive combat. With melee and 
and gunplay, there are tons of abilities and more featured in Flintlock that should make the combat more varied and interesting. You also have a fox-like companion called Enki that gives you magic and portals, letting you fly through areas and take on the undead in your quest to take the land back. Flintlock looks like a pretty neat game coming out soon, and although it's more souls light than Souls-like, I'll still consider it a Souls-like for the sake of this video. Also revealed during the Xbox showcase, Wu Chang Fallen Feathers is set in ancient China, where you play as a pirate warrior named Wu Chang who is suffering from amnesia and a disease called Ornithropy that is also the source of her powers. You must explore the lands of Shu and harvest skills from the foes you defeat, sacrificing red mercury to develop new techniques and more. You fight against abominations that draw from ancient lore and threaten whatever life is left in the land. In Wu Chang Fallen Feathers, you must piece together her lost memories, make choices that lead to different endings, and travel through environments dungeons, and more. Wu Cheng looks like a pretty interesting game that has a lot of elements to it, and the game releases sometime around 2025. If you're a fan of Warframe, you might find Soulframe to be an interesting game to keep an eye out for as well. Soulframe is an upcoming fantasy MMO with melee combat and has a very Souls-like feel to it. Soulframe is not related to Warframe and is a fantasy-based game instead of sci-fi like Warframe is. Soulframe will include player versus environment combat, procedural generation, and co-op gameplay, as well as a slower, heavier, and more methodical gameplay style, similar to what you may see in Souls games. Tenocon on July 20 this year is going to have more information on Soulframe Soul frame, so stay tuned if you find this game to be intriguing. First Berserker Kazan is an upcoming Souls-like that is about former General Kazan who was accused of treason and is an outcast, condemned to exile beyond the Empire despite having been a hero that saved the land from Berserk Dragon Hismar. Throughout the game, you fight enemies, reclaim what was taken from you, and collect equipment, unlock skills and perks, and more. First Berserker combines Devil May Cry hack and slash combat with hardcore action, but it still has a bit of a Souls-like feel to it even if it's not totally as slow or methodical as most Souls games tend to be in their combat style. It does seem to have an art style closer to some anime games out there like Code Vein, but it still looks pretty interesting and seems to have a cool backstory to it as well. The game is coming out soon, but we don't have an official release date just yet. Deathbound is an upcoming party-based Souls-like where you travel through the unforgiving world of Akratia that lets you find fallen warriors throughout your journey, letting you add up to four in a single party. Each fallen warrior is an individual character with unique skills, combat styles, and stories. Absorbing their essence allows for you to use them in gameplay. In combat, there's a sync meter that charges and is shared across the four characters, letting you deal devastating attacks on enemies, especially bosses. Deathbound combines the Afro-Brazilian martial art of capoeira with melee combat for an interesting Souls-like experience. Experience. There's currently a demo and the game is slated for release sometime in 2024.
2025 is getting a new PlayStation exclusive called Ballad of Antara, which is an action RPG that features multiple playable characters, each with their own unique gameplay, class, and story. The game has very strong Souls-like influences with similar gameplay and a similar style of art. However, it's a free-to-play title that has a single-player narrative, but also has support for three-player co-op, letting you play through story quests, explore, and run through dungeons with other people. Ballad of Antara takes place in a fantasy world where two realities coexist, one with normal people and the other with Para, strange beings. Your character has the ability to traverse between the two realities, which is what makes you an emissary in the game. Your task is to rally and find other emissaries and uncover the truth behind the world's duality. Ballad of Antara was revealed recently at PlayStation State of Play, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty interesting game, but we'll just have to wait and see what it's going to be like, especially with it being free to play. Dust of forgotten miracles! Rain fire from above! <laughs> this desolate flame needs a sprinkle. Mortal Right is an upcoming action-based melee souls-like that lets you pick from a variety of different characters, each having their own story, fighting style, and abilities. You'll be able to use different skills and strategies throughout the game, and can also play it solo or with friends or random players in 5-player co-op. Mortal Right combines souls-like combat with roguelike elements, such as procedural generation. Loading into a level for the first time changes elements like the enemies you face, the weather, the path, etc., but if you die, the level will reset the same way as before you died. However, if you go back to the Menu, for instance, to change maybe the character you're playing as, the level will reset once again. Currently, the game is in early access and will be coming out sometime soon. And with that being said, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed that video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe with notifications set to all so you never miss out on a single upload. Comment below your thoughts on this list and which of these 10 games you're the most excited for. Don't forget to check out our website for gaming news, guides, and more. The link to that as well as all our other important links are in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in the next one.